Hi everyone, welcome to Doodling Faith. Thank you so much for joining us for week six of our Names of God series and today I'm going to be taking you through Jehovah Rapha. So before I start I just want to thank you all so much for your comments and pictures and um, well wishes that you've sent us alongside this series. We are so blessed that you have joined us. Um, at the end of this series we're going to do a mini series on techniques and uh, different things that you can do in your Bible and then we'll be studying a person over the summer holidays. So maybe if you want to um, state in the comment below who you would like to study or give us any ideas that would be great so I thought I'd just start off um, by showing you the technique that I'm going to be using in my bible and today I'm going to be making a pink grapefruit and an orange and um, the passage that I'm going to be looking at is Exodus 15 22 to 27 and it's all about the bitter waters being made sweet so I thought no better way than a bitter pink grapefruit and um, a sweet orange. So first of all I just laid down some plain water. Um, watercolours are great because they only will spread into wherever the water pools are that you pl put them. So you can kind of stop them from spreading into one another. So here you can see that I'm just going to start doing it in my Bible. Exactly the same technique. The water does kind of run a little bit more than it would on watercolour paper. So just make sure that you don't add as much water. So to kind of give you a context for this verse, Jehovah Rapha, Exodus 15 is just after the Israelites have left Egypt. They have just walked through the parting of the Red Sea and they have spent three days trying to find some water in the desert. Um, so it says, then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. They were trying to find the water and they couldn't find any. And this scripture is all about Jehovah Rapha or the God that heals. It also says that the God who is healing you, it's an active partaking. He's not done it yesterday. He's not doing it tomorrow. He is currently healing all of us. And we, like Israel, have been enslaved in our what I like to call my BC days, my before Christ days. And we still have this slave mindset. And do you know what? I find it so easy to fall back into that same mindset of grumbling and complaining to somebody about God or about my situation, just like the Israelites did. And they start to grumble to Moses saying, what shall we drink? And he cried out to the Lord. Moses didn't turn to somebody else and grumble to them. The first port of call for Moses was to turn to God and to seek him first. So they've literally just come out of 400 years of slavery. And that slave mindset is something that we can all carry. This idea of being worthless or having no use or having no value. And God split the sea and he saved them from that. And yet three days later, they have completely forgotten what God has done for them. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't even last three days. Sometimes I get in the car after I've got home from church and I'm like, oh, grumble, complain, grumble, complain. Do you know how easily we forget the things that God does in our life? And that's one thing I love about Bible journaling is that it really allows me to document the things that God is doing in my life so that I can reread them, so I can turn back to them when I'm having those days where I am falling back into that slave mindset or I'm just not feeling well, guys. Um, some of you might know, some of you might not know that... Um, that I'm not very well, um, that I haven't been very well for um, a period of time. So if you're out there and you're struggling and you really need to know that the Lord is your healer and that he is healing you, then do you know what? I am with you. I'm there with you. I'm feeling it alongside you. Um, but it's all about how we respond in that situation. Do we fall back into that slave mindset? Of, this isn't fair. This isn't good enough. I want more. God, where are you? Or do we try and grow beyond that mindset, grow into the freedom, into the promised land that God has got for us, that Jesus has saved and set apart for us? And do you know what? We quickly forget what God has done for us. I very quickly forget what God has done for me. But I want to be like Moses and seek God first. Seek the things that he has for me in my life. And just be reminded that sometimes my healing, sometimes the thing that God wants to do in my life, doesn't always sound like or look like or appear like what I think it should. 
So if we go back to the verse, it says, and he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a log. Oh, great. That's a log, not water. Um, And he threw it into the water and the water became sweet. Do you know that God is turning your bitter into better? He's making you better through a process of inner healing that we're going through. And then it goes on to say that there the Lord made for them a statue and a rule. And there he tested them, saying, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord our God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh, the Lord you are God who heals. If you're going through a period in your life where you're at the absolute end of yourself, God wants to show you that even when you're feeling like you're sinking and everything is failing around you, that he is still I am. He is still the same God that already moved in your life and he should be the first person that we cry out to. I feel so comforted by this statement that the Lord is healing me. I know it might not actually be physically healed, but I'm better because he is healing me of my bitterness and he's turning it into better. Lord, I thank you for this revelation of how much you love us, how much you want to change us and transform us and renew us. I pray for everyone listening that you would continue to change our bitter into better and that you would open our eyes and ears to hear and see how you are changing us and the miracles that you've already done for us. Thank you so much for listening, guys, and following along with us for this series. We're going to have a mini series for the next two weeks on some techniques that we can use in our Bibles. And then we're going to be coming back to that study of a person in our Bible. So comment below with the person that you'd like us to look at. Um, and don't forget to check out our social media and tag us on all of your posts from the series. Take care. Thanks. Bye.